When you were growing up, how many times were you told, maybe when you're older? I got told that a lot, and honestly, I still do. Looking back now, I understand some of it, such as why the grown-ups told me I wasn't old enough to walk around the neighborhood by myself at the age of six. But some of it I still don't quite understand. Why can't a fifth grader try to change the world? Because he or she is only 10? Age is simply a number. It doesn't truly define our capabilities. My siblings and I decided young, well, younger, that we were going to break down these so-called age barriers. We saw a problem with the world and became determined to fix it. And it all started with birthday presents. Most kids today would be horrified at the idea of not receiving any gifts for their birthdays. However, it's different when it's been that way your entire life. In my family, starting with your first birthday, guests bring donations for the food bank in place of gifts when they come to celebrate. After our fifth birthday, we have to choose our own organization to donate to. For example, in the past, my sister Emily has collected books for libraries devastated by Hurricane Katrina. While I have collected money for breast cancer research, and even building supplies for Habitat for Humanity. For my, f my 10th birthday in June, I decided to collect school supplies to take down to a poor school in Playa del Carmen, Mexico. After delivering the school supplies, the man taking us around town thought that since both my parents were in the medical field, we might like to see the small clinic that had been established there. We agreed, and when we got there, we were astonished by what we saw. There was a wall in the clinic completely filled with pictures of children ranging in age from infants to teenagers. After inquiring about the wall, we learned it was known as La Pared de Corazones, or Wall of Hearts. We also learned that these children were in danger of dying without life-saving heart surgery. We decided that we could do something to help them, and we wouldn't let our age hold us back. So after a week in Mexico, we returned home to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. But still, the idea that these kids were in danger of dying simply because of a lack of funds continued to bother us. So our little gears began turning, and we became very determined to help with the problem. So we broke out the lemonade stand, started walking the neighbor's dogs, and after about three weeks of this, had right around $18. <laughs> but this didn't discourage us. Fortunately, childhood comes with quite a bit of persistence. So we came up with a name for our organization, Kids Helping Kids Fix Broken Hearts. My sister Emily, who has always been an outstanding artist, drew up an appropriate logo to match the name. From there, our ideas grew even bigger. At first, we wanted to print her design onto t-shirts, but waved off that idea because everybody does t-shirts. And then we wanted to print it onto coffee mugs, but after totaling expenses, the cost was just too great. So we finally settled on something practical, something somebody uses every single day. We decided to print Emily's design onto dish towels. Now, my parents weren't very optimistic about our project, thinking that they'd ordered us 50 towels, we would lose interest, and they would end up with 45 in the basement. But although young, we had a plan. We sold all 50 dish towels within a few weeks. So our parents ordered us 100 more. These also proved to sell very quickly. We finally started organizing our classmates to come in at lunch to help fold the towels and tie the information cards on. Soon, churches, rotary clubs, and other activist groups began inviting us to speak. Our local hospital invited us to their annual Christmas event where we sold 650 of our dish towels at the price of $5 a piece. During one Easter weekend at a local church, we sold 850 dish towels and raised over $4,000. After six months of this, we had raised $15,000 to take back down to the clinic. With this money, 13 children received their life-saving heart procedures. Since then, we have gotten a dish towel in all 50 states and in over 37 countries, including Zimbabwe, Ecuador, Azerbaijan, and Chile. Now, after some issues, we decided to move our charity from Mexico back to the United States. This infuriated my 11-year-old spirit because I wanted to change the whole world. I thought we were moving backwards instead of forwards, probably due to the fact I had no concept of Mexican tax law or the logistics of transferring money out of the country. 
But soon enough, we were partnered with Sacred Heart Children's Hospital here in Spokane, and within a month, we had our first request to help a child from Helena, Montana. Soon after that, we were used as a bar mitzvah project in St. Louis, Missouri. We decided this was our door to partner with St. Louis Children's Hospital. From there, we began helping families from all around the Midwest. After raising several thousand dollars of the bar mitzvah, we decided we have enough money to partner with Texas Heart in Houston, Texas. Almost immediately there, we began helping families from all along the South. Donations continued to pour in. So last April, we decided that we had enough money that we could partner with Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital in Baltimore, Maryland. We have helped many families from all along the East Coast and even a child from Costa Rica through Johns Hopkins. We are hoping to partner with Stanford University Hospital or the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota to help us with our goal of helping a child from all 50 states. So far, we have helped 22 families from 15 different states. Now, our efforts have been recognized in more ways than we ever could have imagined. In 2010, we were awarded the Jim Chase Spirit of Community Award here in Spokane. And in 2011, we were top 10 finalists for the Small Charity of the Year Award in San Diego, California. Also in 2011, I was awarded a $10,000 college scholarship through Cole's Cares for Kids program. My sister Emily was named one of America's top 10 youth volunteers and awarded the Prudential Spirit of Community Award in Washington, DC. Last fall, we were approached by anthologist and publisher of the book Chicken Soup of the Soul and invited to be featured in a new book coming out this fall called Stand Up. So whenever we think our charity is gonna die down, it always seems to pick up steam somehow. Thanks to the gifts of persistence and determination that come with being a child, we have sold almost 7,000 dish towels and raised over $88,000. Now, I want all of you to walk away with this. It doesn't matter how old or young you are. All you need is some motivation, dedication, and enough courage to use the opportunities. I am lucky to have been able to do what I set out to do. Prove that just because you're young doesn't mean you have to be small. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. She's a true servant leader. Sarah, come on out. They're clapping for you. Come on. This is for you, babe. Thank you, Sarah.